Histology. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the eye and some of the histology of that. Uh, probably the biggest thing is going to be the inner tunica nervosa is going to be probably our biggest thing here. The different layers of the retina as you can see on the bottom image on this one. The, there's a number of different layers with a lot of nuclei you can see at the bottom image here. Outside of that knowing some of the main structures when you're looking at the whole eyeball there. So we can see in the middle of that one, you can see the back cavity, the front cavity, and then that L is the lens on that one with the iris coming in on each side. So we're gonna look at this based on the number of the tunics. So we have our outer tunic, kind of the middle tunic that has a lot of these structures, and then the inner nervous tunic, which is going to be mainly the retina. So really, if you go back to the image we were just looking at where it had the L, you have the anterior cavity is gonna be in front of that. The posterior cavity is going to be behind it. The anterior cavity of the eye is a filled with a blood filtrate called the aqueous humor. This is made and continuous reabsorbed on one of my favorite anatomy structures. Uh, there are histology names. The canal of Schlem is what it drains out of. Uh, the back part behind the lens is the posterior cavity and this is filled with a kind of a jelly-like substance called vitreous body. Helps kind of hold the retina in place on the back of that nervous tunic because as we'll see a little bit later on the retina is actually not attached to the wall of the eye at all it just sits against it but does not actually anchor there at all so like I said the fibrous tunic is this outer part of the eye uh, it has really two main parts to it you have the sclera which is kind of the whites of the eye and the whole outer kind of dense collagen fiber, dense regular connective tissue type of substance that's making up the eye. Uh, if you ever take anatomy and physiology, dissecting the eye, it's actually quite hard to cut into. It's very, very tough. On the very front of the eye, you have a transparent part of this uh, fibrous tunic called the cornea. It is going to help uh, bend the light into the lens and then help that lens focus it onto the retina. Uh, there is multiple layers to this. Not that I'm going to have you try to tell it apart, but you can see it over at the right there that there is some distinct layers to this. But again, outside of what I am expecting you to know on this one. Uh, the middle tunic is this fibrous tunic. It's going to contain what's called the ciliary body and lens along with the iris and some of those other structures here. Uh, you can see the CS on this picture is that canal of Schlem. Uh, again, not something I'm probably going to have you try to identify in a picture of the eye or anything or in a slide, but it is what does drain that aqueous humor. And like I said to me, one of my favorite histology names just because I think it's a really funny name. Uh, there is some other structures that kind of hold that in place. Like you can see there that uh, the basement membrane underneath the cornea main stuff I want to focus on a little bit more is going to be some of these parts of that vascular tunic along with the iris and the ciliary body. One of the things you'll see is when you look at the back of the eye and you can see that layer that has the C on it right here. This is called the choroid coat. In the human eye, uh, this is a layer of cells that has a lot of melanin being produced in here. Uh, this black pigment is really there so when light gets into the eyes it is absorbed in this black pigment and you can't get light coming in from the sides at all through anything here because any light that hits the retina it's going to be recognized by the retina and try to make sense out of it so we want the only light that's coming in to be coming in through the pupil in the front of the eye and having this chorate coat with this melanin pigment helps make sure that's the case uh, like it says they're highly vascular you can see a couple different blood vessels even just in this image the other thing we'll see with the, if you look at the whole picture of the eye, you can see on the top one here, that one with the L is the lens. You can see this little structure going on in front of the lens. It is going to have some smooth muscle in it. Uh, that is part of the iris and kind of at the base of that, that CB is the ciliary body. This is going to have some smooth muscle that helps adjust the shape of the lens uh, through the use of these suspensory ligaments that can pull on the lens. So when that muscle contracts or relaxes, it can either put tension on the lens or release tension from the lens that lets the lens change shape and allows stuff to stay in focus as it moves towards you and away from you. So in this picture you can see it even a little bit better. You can see the ciliary body on each side of the lens if you're looking at the sides of that right there. 
Then the other thing you can see is you have this iris, that eye coming into the front and front of the lens that's sitting down here like this. Uh, if you look at the bottom picture there, you can see there's a lot of pigmented cells in there. The iris is that muscle when you look at somebody's eye, that is the colored part of the eye that surrounds the black dot, which is the pupil, which is actually where the P is on the screen there, that opening. Uh, it's actually an absence of a structure there. Uh, light goes into the eye and doesn't leave, and that's part of the reason that the pupil actually looks black. Uh, in reality, it's just the opening. Like I said, the iris is all about making sure the right amount of light gets in. As you've kind of seen with the scopes, even too much light makes an image hard to look at. Too little light makes it hard to look at. Uh, same thing with our eyes, trying to actually deal with any uh, light coming into them. It needs to be the right amount of light. Too much or too little is going to either overexpose or underexpose the retina. And that can lead to issues in getting a good image. So because of that, we regulate this so there's different muscles. Not that I need you to know these muscle names exactly, but there's two different types of muscles that can either constrict or dilate the pupil. The lens, like I said, is in the center there. It is avascular, it is transparent. Uh, there is some multiple layers to it here uh, that are putting it all together. It does have this capsule that surrounds it and then a large amount of this protein called crystalline that gets accumulated and generates this lens. And then finally, the last thing to kind of talk about in terms of the layers of the eyes is the neural tunic. This is going to be the retina, which again has quite a number of layers to it. There's going to be three main things that I focus on with it, the three main layers of nuclei on this. But we're going to see we have photoreceptors and then the cells that are kind of upstream of that. Uh, our photoreceptors are called the rods and cones. Per retina, uh, there's just a ridiculous amount of these. So... Per eye, you have about 120 million rods and 7 million cones. So when you really think about it, you combine your two of these, uh, your two retinas from the, each one from each eye, and you're looking at over, in reality, a quarter billion receptors. So quite a lot of receptive stuff there. Uh, much more than any other sensory organ that we talk about. Uh, the rods are really dealing with black and white vision grayscale vision. They have really good sensitivity to very little light, but they do not allow you to do color uh, and they don't allow you to do a sharper vision as much. So if we're looking at the retina, you can see there is a number of different layers. So in this image down on the bottom there, it's all labeled with the different layers there. But one of the things I do want to point out is if you're looking at the bottom, you can see that choroid coat is down on the bottom. Above that, the first layer, the layer that's just up from that is that photoreceptor layer. It's the one that has the P on it. Light technically has to pass through all the layers above that. So this is the layers, the light's actually traveling like this. If that bottom layer right here is the photoreceptor layer, light travels through all that to hit the photoreceptor and then works its way back up through all those before it's going to get to the optic nerve and leave the eyeball. So... To me, what I usually end up wanting people to know is what these three main layers are. So we have, when you're looking at any of these ones, that P is that photoreceptor layer, and then you're gonna have the layers above that is the nuclei of all those ones. So you have three layers of nuclei if you're looking at this one here. You can see the layer with the G, the layer with the IN, and the layer with the ON. Uh, what's going on there, the G is the ganglion cell layer. That layer in the middle where all those nuclei, the IN one, that is the bipolar cell layer. And the ON is, is kind of called the outer nuclear and the inner nuclear layer. But the ON is actually all the nuclei that are involved with those photoreceptors. So we have a photoreceptor layer followed by a bipolar layer followed by a ganglion layer. To me, I always want people to be able to identify those three main layers of nuclei that are going on there and where the photoreceptors would be. I generally don't mess with the layers that are in between that. So again, that retina is the nervous coat. It starts up just behind the lens and you can see the peripheral vision going around the two sides there. Uh, the sharpest vision is back where you see that fovea at the very back of the eye on this one. That is the sharpest area of vision. 
The other thing you notice on this one, you can see where the optic nerve is leaving the eyeball. One of the things we're gonna see is where all those nerves have to leave the eyeball, there is actually no photoreceptors there. And that's something I would try to show you if we can find a good slide, uh, digital slide of an entire eyeball. I'll show you where there is that lack of photoreceptors actually is the optic disc or blind spot. So again, I want you to really kind of know a few main layers here. So that layer where it says photoreceptors, rods, and cones, you can see the photoreceptors are that upper part there. The nuclei of all of those make that first layer of nuclei. We are then going to have another layer of nuclei just below that. That's that bipolar layer. Uh, that's the next level of cells up. And then the layer with the least amount of nuclei is going to be the ganglion cell layer, which is above that. What we're going to see is there's going to be a bunch of axons leaving from there that are going to become the actual uh, optic nerve that's going to leave the eye. So again, this is probably the best example of it here. It's kind of upside down, but again, you can see the rods and cones are at the top there. Those little triangle shaped things or little pyramid looking things are what actually be cones. The rods are in between those, but you can see that first layer of nuclei, that is that photoreceptor layer. You can then see down from that, the next layer of cells beneath that one, that is that bipolar cell layer. And then you can see the one where there's only about one layer of those nuclei, that is again gonna be that ganglion cell layer. Those are the three layers I do want you to be able to know on that. The one thing I do wanna point out, there is a number of different nuclei that may be in between those layers or involved within this one. Besides just those bipolar cells and those ganglion cells, there are things called horizontal cells and amacrine cells. To me, a little bit above the level that I need you to know, but again, that inner nuclear cell layer is mainly bipolar cells, but you can see there's gonna be some other cells in, mixed in with it. We're not gonna to try to differentiate those. I'm not gonna have you try to tell them apart from one another, but I do need you to know those three layers of nuclei as you work your way through the retina. And again, this is a nice little version now, and to me, this is probably the one that's most useful to you, kind of seeing the cartoon version with the actual histology on each side. So you can see the rods and cones, that bipolar cell layer where there's the nuclei of those cells and a few other cell types mixed in. And then at the bottom of these images, the ganglion cell layer, both in cartoon and in actual histology version. The last thing I kinda wanna show you here is if you look right where the BS is in the center there, you can see you have these layers of nuclei on both sides of here and then you get to the center and there's nothing there. That is that blind spot. Uh, the main thing with the blind spot, there is no photoreceptors there, which is why we call it a blind spot. If anything is actually hitting where light is getting focused onto that part, you're actually not gonna perceive it. Your brain actually takes and fills it in based in terms of what's being seen on the retina and other areas. But you can actually hold some stuff up there and you can actually see that stuff does go into a blind spot. So what I'll do real quickly after this is we'll take a look at a slide of an eyeball and maybe of the retina. We'll look at some of the different layers there. And then the last thing we're gonna look at with this is gonna be the ear. The first thing I'm gonna show you here is just a picture of an entire eyeball. So you, I think everybody can kind of get the gist of this one by looking at it. So this would be the posterior cavity right here. Anterior cavity would be in the front. So now where I have the cursor right here, this would be that cornea. This is the lens, the structure in the center here. And then if we were to look coming across the sides here, this is one half of like, cause we're doing a side view of this. This is one half of the iris. You can see the pigmented cells along the side here. Your ciliary body would be this structure right here. If we go towards the back of this, we can do a couple things here. I have another slide that probably will show it a little bit better. But if we zoom in on the back here, you can see the pigmented layer right here. That would be that choroid. And then you can see the three layers of nuclei. That is the retina right there. I'm gonna show you this on a separate slide that allows us to zoom in a little bit further but this would be that photoreceptor layer, 
bipolar cell layer, and then the ganglion cell layer. The last thing I want to show you on this one is actually this spot right here. You can see in the center where I have the cursor, there is no layers of retina there. This is the blind spot. So the other slide I want to show you is this one. This is showing you a little bit more zoomed in on the back of the eye. What we can do on this one is we can zoom in on one of these layers a little bit more. And again, if we're looking at this, you can see, again, very dark pigmented layer here. This is going to be that choroid coat. That's part of that vascular tunic. Your rods and cones are going to be in this layer right here. And the nuclei for those are going to be right in this first layer of nuclei. You can see there is some connections in between right here. We then have the nuclei of what are really going to be those that bipolar cell layer. Also going to have those horizontal and amacrine cell nuclei in this layer, but to me, if we kind of know this is the bipolar cell layer right here, we then are going to have some connections between those and the stream cells upstream, which those are going to be the ganglion cell layers right here, and the extensions going to those are soon are going to become that optic nerve, which is going to travel to the blind spot and out of the eye.